Sonic Universe Issue 18 After Speedy calls Tails a freak again, telling him that his friends are captured, he explains that he thinks Tails and his friends had invaded his private training grounds, and he plans to make Antoine and Bunny tell them why. But Antoine already did tell them! He said he was on his honeymoon! Then Speedy insults Tails for flying despite not having wings instead of being impressed with him because he's that much of an intolerant jackass. It's just now when T-Pop bites Speedy from behind, and Tails flies away from Speedy into a dark water-filled cave, noticing that the updraft in a cave of all places is crazy. He attacks Tails who goes into hiding rather than being unconscious, fortunately, and he fortunately gets called back to the Battle Lord just in time. Tails decides to go to sleep, saying that he can't think of a plan with his head ringing like that, although he'd be lucky to get to sleep with that, too. The next morning, Antoine and Bunny wake up in cells, whispering to each other about how they're about to carry out the escape plan they thought of off-screen. When Bunny gets grabbed and taken away, Antoine creates a distraction by shouting out for her and snags the prison key as a result. He stole Robotnik's ray gun in much the same manner way early on, so it's not like this perfect thief skill of him is that new. I wonder if Patch is that good at thievery. Bunny is brought to the Battle Lord, who dismisses his guards, saying that they're all friends here. He's obviously trying to get Bunny turned against Sonic and biting him in a clever ploy. How silly. Bunny would never try to hurt Sonic. Oh, actually, it turns out that he had assumed that she was representative of the Dark Legion due to her cyber parts. That's more creative than I thought. Bunny has a great moment of intelligence where, for once, she's the one doing the manipulating. She says that she's Commissar Bunny, a deep cover agent. And she even tells a blatant lie that she even married Antoine just to get deeper into his group of friends. Now I want to see an alternate dimension where this was actually the truth. The Battle Lord explains that poor networking aside, he's only affiliated with the Eggman Empire, and so not being part of Eggman's Legion means news comes slowly to him. He snaps his fingers, which causes drinks and comfy chairs to chop from the floor. Either he's a wizard or has technology that responds to the snapping sound, or that's his cue to minions under the floor to flip a switch. Either way, Bunny says that she's sure Eggman would be pleased to know she was given support. I've given some surprising backstory to the Battle Bird Armada, as he explains that they want to find their fabled homeland and unlock the mysteries of their ancestors. First off, you'd think they would have found it by now and found out those mysteries thanks to archaeological studies, with all the world being mapped out from centuries of world navigators and all that time passing. How uneducated are they that they can't find out the information already? Can't they just do history research to find out where it is? Crack open a book or go on the internet? Same could apply to the lost wandering tribe of Echidnas, really. That, in retrospect, just got slaughtered in Albion because they made it there thanks to Athera in the first place. That's another reason the Albion genocide was stupid writing. You'd think if they had a prophecy about how to get to Albion and glorifying it, they'd also have the prophecy warn them about their impending doom. Instead, one of Athera's greatest accomplishments becomes a huge failure resulting in the death of all those people. After the Battle Lord says that they would have succeeded if it weren't for disloyal rogues, Bunny for some reason almost chokes on her blue-colored wine. Which is really confusing because it's clearly working on meta logic here, as I'm supposed to immediately get that he meant the Babylon rogues, and not literally any other rogue criminal out there, and she immediately gets that. N not to mention that rogue could be interpreted to mean traitor in general, like rogue robot, so disloyal rogue could be interpreted as a redundancy for emphasis, not literally meaning the Babylon rogues. Besides, Bunny never even met them. The Babylon rogues were only introduced to Sonic Tails and Knuckles. I do like the concept of the Babylon rogues being from the Battle Bird Armada. It makes sense since they're birds. And that would explain where they got their airboards. They stole them from a dedicated military group that would have access to such technology. Jet the Hawk clearly says in the games that he comes from a long and proud line of thieves in the sky like him, so this directly contradicts that, and I like that originality for the comic as opposed to being just like the games for once. When the Battle Lord calls Tails a two-tailed freak, Bunny proceeds to flub up in her manipulating showing Sally's better at it, but surprisingly it's not because of the horrible insult that was suddenly thrown at her friends. Instead, it's because she stupidly made a mistake saying it's good that he got away from his men. Bunny fortunately avoids totally slipping up by saying it's good for his men that he got away, 
Lying that Tails is a weapons expert child soldier, he could have killed them. Bunny gets back to getting information about the Armada in a sly way that makes me really wish we could have seen more of her evil twin. And after T-Pop goes off like an alarm clock, because Tails conveniently thought to put that function in him off screen, he conveniently remembers what's going on in his groggy state really quickly, and gets alert right away in the next panel. After briefly suffering from the pain of Speedy's attacks on him that don't show on him at all, not even a little bruise, Tails flies off with T-Pop, and sees that while the Birdmen have guards watching a sea fox, they didn't set guards for Tails' workshop which Tails lampshades as being convenient. He gets out some bombs from his workshop that he fortunately had already built on a peaceful island conveniently enough. This would have been much easier to swallow if he had a brief time skip between him going to the workshop and building the bombs. And this is probably where the Tails adventure adaptation came in, as Tails used nothing but bombs in that game. It was just as much about bombing walls, so let's see if he does that. Oh, the bombs are just gas bombs, knocking them all out. Well, I guess that is much more PG-13. No, I mean kid-friendly. But in Tails Adventure, Tails fought robots, so throwing actual bombs at them was just fine. Why can't he throw bombs at robots here? I prefer this, though, because at least it's original. Tails gets into the sea fox, lampshading how stupid he was to not investigate the fake Third Island right away. Well, to be fair, at least him not investigating right away gave Antoine Bunny the whole day to have a vacation together in peace. Tails says to T-Pop that he can't find a way in, and that sonar shows there might be an underground tunnel leading to Coco Island, which he knows from experience has a robust cave network. Meanwhile, there's a charming humorous moment as Antoine's actually giving casual cooking advice to the battle bird guarding his cell. It makes sense that after all that time of awkward silence together, they'd start talking just to break the silence, and it's nice to see Antoine as a bit of a cook, but the only time I ever heard of him cooking so far was that one time he made chili dogs. Then, something that surprised me, it's revealed that either getting the guard to leave from this was all a carefully planned part of his master plan, or he was really chatting and only just now came up with the idea. Either way, he got really lucky that this worked out for him the way he wanted it. The minute the guard walks away to go get another guard for some cooking advice, Antoine uses the prison escape card when he's gone, smirking evilly just like before. I love seeing him like this. And it's creative that there's a card instead of a key. Then all of a sudden, it's revealed that Antoine correctly guessed that Bunny would be mistaken for a legionnaire and given intelligence. I guess I shouldn't be so surprised because she looks like one, and not everyone on the planet knows who she is. Most cyborgs don't become that way the way she did. Suddenly, there's finally a hole in its plan, as he stumbles into a guard that stayed behind that he somehow didn't notice before. The alarm goes off, it's revealed by a guard that Antoine escaped and he's in pursuit, and Bunny runs off with a clever excuse that she's going to do damage control. Meanwhile, Tails says that the sensors on the Sea Fox are so good that a whole group of enemy subs shouldn't have been able to sneak up on him. He shows cute naivety by getting excited over technology that his enemies are using to sneak up on him with cloaking devices and asking who made it. And in a charming moment, one of the enemies he talked to with the microphone he conveniently had to solve for some reason actually tries to answer his question, only to be told off. He shoots a laser behind his sub Another bit of originality since you can't do that in the game, and after hitting a bunch of subs and bragging that Sonic couldn't do that, he immediately shows a ridiculous amount of insecurity by saying that Sonic could, even though Sonic doesn't have a submarine and certainly wouldn't fare well underwater without one. Not to mention he can't shoot lasers. His sub gets hit, and what I presume is the good-natured grunt he complimented, apologizes that it was an accident. Was he trying to defend him with his lasers? Maybe he's called an idiot by his fellow grunt all the time, and it's more likely to rebel as a result. Antoine says while running alone that he needs a place to hide and regroup, and when he opens a door leading to the edge of a cliff, he naturally lampshades, WHO PUTS A DOOR LIKE THAT IN A PLACE LIKE THIS?! Exactly. Though this is an example of forced comedy, because there's no reason in-universe they would put that door there. Suddenly, Bunny shows up just in time to save Antoine, lying that he's hers, well, that is technically true, and threatening the battle bird Grunt that's not willing to cooperate with her. Then we have a sequence where Antoine acts surprised and devastated that Bunny's working with the Battle Lord, but considering that he said Bunny was gathering intelligence earlier, this is obviously just a ruse. These guys are world-class actors because this looks so sincere. Antoine acts sad and says that Silver said there would be a traitor in the Freedom Fighters, and intentionally throws himself out of the door saying goodbye cruel world, with Bunny screaming out for him as a result. 
This really looks like a cheap marketing toy cliffhanger because of the fact that it ends the issue. Although it would have been a more interesting and tragic way to kill Antoine off than an explosion from a robot. The big problem with this to me, no, not that it's dark, that didn't even occur to me as a problem. The real problem is that he just screamed in panic about how high up the door was, and he was alone, as far as he knew, until the guards snuck up on him again out of complete nowhere, with no indication that Antoine heard or smelled him coming, and was only pretending he thought he was alone as a result. He just panicked about the height, and now he's jumping when he showed no indication that he thought surviving that kind of a fall would be likely. But if he's falling to the ocean, and he clearly showed he can swim, it should be fine if he's doing this to make an escape attempt that's subtle. This issue is by Ian Flynn, I really enjoyed it a lot. It has Bunny being mistaken for a representative of the Dark Legion, and giving tons of information as she manipulates the Battle Lord with that. Which is a surprising twist that I really should have seen coming at this point. I guess I was thinking that because Bunny clearly showed up with people who aren't cyborgs, it should have been blatantly obvious that she wasn't a Legionnaire, despite her appearance. And the Battle Lord was really overthinking it by assuming she was a spy as an explanation for her cyborg parts. It's a great creative use of her being a cyborg that's not just about her being badass with it. It also has Tails using a submarine to try to get to the fake island, which has a charming moment where he has friendly interaction with a grunt complimenting the cloaking technology of his enemies, and another friendly moment with the grunt, Antoine is giving one cooking advice. Grunts really need a lot more moments like these to humanize them. Even if it's kind of unrealistic to expect these from criminal thugs who are only shown dealing with their enemies. Where it starts stretching my willing suspicion of disbelief is the revelation that Antoine predicted Bunny would be given information mistaken for a legionnaire, or at least Bunny did, but she looks so confused when it happened. She really reveals herself to be a world-class actor, along with Antoine at the end, holy shit. But their great acting is weird considering that Bunny made a huge slip-up saying it was good that Tails escaped in front of the villain. So I was under the impression that she was worse at manipulating than Sally. And I really hated that she made that slip up instead of getting angry from Tails being called a two-tailed freak and having to control her temper afterwards. She didn't even seem to notice the insult. The issue really had a way of ending, though it's obvious they wouldn't kill Antoine this way. Especially in a, god forbid, kid-friendly comic of cartoon animals that had guns and blood and drugs and nuclear weapons and characters being killed off occasionally. No, I don't care that it was dark. It's a fascinating concept that I'd like to see in an alternate universe where it came true and Bunny really was a traitor. We're never going to see Silver accuse Bunny of being a traitor, by the way. Well, he does, but it's not like there's a whole plot around it. So, we just kind of get cheated out of that. The big problem is that Antoine just acted scared and totally surprised at the door, which Bunny couldn't have possibly told him about to make this part of their escape plan because she was away from him the entire time. So if this is acting on both their part, well one, that's very unnecessary because Bunny could have just beat the crap out of that guard with her cyborg arm if she wanted to escape with Antoine. But instead Antoine did this. Were they thinking on the same wavelength as a good couple and came up with the plan without words at the same time? The only reason this apparent suicide attempt happened was to create the cheapest of all cliffhangers. It would have been fine if we just had one or two panels after it. Besides, I'm not sure if Antoine would actually do this even if he did think Bunny was a traitor. He's supposed to be a coward. He'd be too scared to do this when he has more to live for. I mean, he stayed alive with the evil twins, didn't he? Basically, Antoine and Bunny are shown to make a Xanatist gambit, or even something as unbelievable as a Batman gambit, when they've never shown this kind of conniving genius planning skills before, especially not on Antoine's side. And they're very lucky that Antoine's escape plan worked.